how do you think about the role of being a dad and being a parent in in protecting your kids from things that might be important for them to ultimately understand, but not as kids? Like that being that filter for some of the harsher parts of the world. It's harder now. Uh, it, it is harder now as a, as a father, you know, of four kids, it's hard to shield your kids from a lot of stuff because it's coming in faster than, in fact, I, sometimes I, I have this feeling that I'm not doing a good enough job with my kids because whereas I've tried to block them from social media and from having like, they don't have social anything. I have them on my stuff. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have them on my stuff and that was done you know, on purpose. So like, look, I want them to kind of participate, but not be on it all the time. Yeah. But then comes the pandemic and then they're passing out laptops and iPads. And now my kids yeah. find ways to go on YouTube and look at YouTube shorts. And it's just like, it's information overload because they need it for homework. I want to take it away, but they need it to do home. You know what I mean? And they're going, and it's just like, whoa. And I had this moment, this crazy moment. I don't even know if this answers your question, but I had this crazy moment. My son falls asleep on his bed and he has his iPad next to him, his school assigned iPad. Yeah. And it's YouTube shorts and it's these videos. And I just sat there and I'm like, this boy done fell asleep and I'm just listening to it. I'm like, it seems innocuous, but it's also rewiring their brains about all of these, these life commandments about race, about, and they're, they're all done in jokey ways, but they're done in a jokey way to penetrate their psyche, to start to retrain them. And I'm like, man, they're getting thousands and thousands of yeah. points that they're just getting in quick, quick bites that you can't control. And so, you know, some will say, well, you're hovering over them too much. I'm like, my parents had control because like there's only so much information you're getting. Now it's like, before I can even have the conversation of sex, boom, social media is getting oh, to yeah. it. Before you can have this, you know, about race in America, boom, it's getting to them. I don't even have the opportunity to present to them like the way I want to raise my kids. It's they're getting it at school. There's all these other propagandas that are happening. And it's just like, you're sitting back and you're going like, man, am I letting my kids down? You know what I mean? Do I have to, you know, let off the gas as far as going to work and doing this and just say, hey guys, let's hunker down and it's just gonna be us homeschooling and I won't ever leave and I won't, you know, I can't provide at, you know, whatever level I want to. I just have to be here because it's, it's happening fast and no parent in America can fight against social media, the internet and how much information is coming in. It's coming in at a pace that I don't think it's, in my opinion, is for kids. Their brains are still forming. They're in the directive stage. Now, once they get into the decision-making stage, they should be able to, but I need time in the directive stage. What I love about the Jewish culture is that you have, you know, the bar mitzvah, right? And the bat mitzvah. Yeah. And it's that time where they go from the directive to decision-making around 13 years old. Well, before my kids are 13 years old, my twins, they're getting all the stuff that I can't eat. I'm like, gosh, I don't even have time to teach them. You know what I mean? It's one of those things, it's funny that you bring up bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, because it's something that as a father of a now 18 year old, I've thought about, we had these things, these traditional like rites of passages, mm -hmm. and they would happen around that age, right? That like, I'm Catholic, and so that that's like confirmation re religiously, but it feels like we've kind of lost that in modern, modern times. Right. Like that moment where it's like, now you're a man, son. Right. Like, it, I didn't know when to do that. Like right. it wasn't clear, like there wasn't like a thing that's this is the thing we're going to do that we do as a culture. Right. Because we're we're building we're building the roof before we're building the foundation. Right. And I think that's why you asked earlier, like, you know, talking about the anxiety and a lot of the stuff that's going on with, you know, with the young kids. I think a lot of that is because the roof is being built first. You know, you think about it, you have time, 13 years to groom your kids and build a foundation of what's important, the values, the things that you know were instilled in you from your parents and from your religious belief. You have the opportunity 13 years, like every parent should have that time, right? It's, life is difficult enough, like, right? I need that time, three or four hours I get in the evening to be able to spend that time with my kids. But now it's just like, I'm, I feel like I'm more of a defender, right? I'm going back to my football days, playing defensive end <laughs> and trying to defend, right? Like I'm going in, I'm trying to defend everything that they're getting and I can't, right? So that's, that's the challenge. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. 
Be sure to check out my full conversation with Akbar Baja Biamila. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.